are good. Okay, welcome. We are holding on uh, Perek Yud Vav over here, which is means 16. Usually, it's interesting how it says Yud Vav. Usually it would say Tezayim. Here it says Yud Vav. In the Rambam, it also uses the Yud Vav. But this is a kind of newer safer where it should be using the... Uh, the the traditional way but it doesn't yudvav okay maybe the book is a a complete different type of safer in any case we're holding on page samach in the in this amazing discourse yaviu levush malchus and today is going to be uh, part number five and let's see where we goes umata we're going straight to it if you want to know what we learned earlier listen to 12 hours okay and now we're ready to go <laughs> Now, and we still need to understand this that it says after we've discussed what is the garment of the king and what is the crown of the king. Um, we are left to explain what is the horse of the king. And we said that by the giving of the Torah, we received and by and by Purim, since Purim is the conclusion of the giving of the Torah. So we receive the garment of the king, which is garment is God's God's kingship, which reveals itself. The kingship, the 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 the, the desire of Hashem that I want to be a melech, I want to be a king, which we discussed. Um, the the soiv of kalam and the encompassing light, the the orange self, um, expresses itself only in in the material physical elements of this world, because that's what creates. The yesh, that's what creates the world to be a something. But in the creation of the material world, the somethingness of the world blocks that light. But in a mitzvah, in which we take the somethingness of the world to express, to express the something desire of God, then the physical, with its, with its thickness and density and somethingness, is expressing the, ultimate, the ultimateness of Hashem's truth. And that's the reason why it's uh, called the garment. But we explained that that happens as even when you just fashion a mitzvah to be a mitzvah. When you take something material and you turn it into an object of a mitzvah, you've already taken, already expressed the, 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 uh, the, the Hashem Moloch Geus Lavish, the divine desire for being a king, which is this encompassing desire that surrounds all of existence, that is already being expressed in the object. But then when you're actually doing the mitzvah, not just preparing the item of the mitzvah, that's creating by God a pleasure in being a king. So that's drawing down the keser of malchus of Ein Sof. Pleasure is keter. So you're, you're drawing down the, a new pleasure and a desire in the keser of malchus of Ein Sof. And that's why on Purim, these things were reenacted We'll see why it was through Haman that we'll still talk about. Why is the Haman the one who bringing everything that we're not gonna? I don't think we'll get to that today. But we're now today we're gonna discuss what's the horse because the third thing that he talks about is the horse. Here we go. I think I. Okay. And now we still have to understand. Masha, because of this, that it says. The horse that the king was riding upon it. That that too should be brought for the parade, right? Haman is telling Achishverosh to bring in for the parade, which he thought it was going to be his parade. In the end, it ended up being Mordechai's parade. But he says, bring bring the horse in which the king was riding when the, during the coronation of the king. So this, this idea is what it says, Masha because of this, that it says, when you're riding on your horses, Shabbashas Matan Torah, at the time of the giving of the Torah, Kaniskal, as we said earlier, God came down into this world by riding on his horses. So we need to understand what is this meaning that God rides on a horse? And that same horse that was used by the giving of the Torah re reappeared during the Purim, the Purim miracle and the reacceptance of the Torah on Purim. In the Mivyo look as we explained earlier, there are two levels of the garment of the king. The Kesar Malchus and the and the and the Kesar Malchus and the crown of kingship that was given on its head, which is referring to the Malchus of the Ein Sof, that's the garment, and the 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 Kesar of the Malchus of the Ein Sof, which is much deeper, which is um, 
which is the idea of the crown of the king. Now, according to the simple reading of the of the of the of the of the Megillah of the of the story, is that even though they've already dressed the person up, this person that was going to be paraded in the king's garments, they've already placed upon him the the robes of the king. And they've already put the crown on his head as well. It's still not the completion. It still does not reach the ultimate satisfaction that the king desires in giving this person honor. Because remember, Haman is asking, Achishverosh is asking uh, um, oh, Haman, if the king want, desires to honor someone, how should he honor him? So Haman lists all the objects, which would mean that even after you give him the garment and the crown, it's not enough until uh, until you throw him onto the horse as well. Put him on the horse, that's when it's going to be completed. Last is Be'isha Zeh, to do with this person, Kiyim, it will only be fulfilled, Kasha Yirkov, when the person will ride, on the, on the, on the horse that the king rode, Bilavush Malchus wearing this uh, royal garment, the Kesar Malchus and the royal crown. The Kesar Malchus and this royal crown. Sha'az Davka, which only then, Nishlam Hadavar Betachlus, the matter is going to be completed in its perfection. Imken comes out that call Iker Shlemus in the Lavush Malchus, the Kesar Malchus, which is telling you that since it mentions first the garment and then the crown, and then it mentions the horse is a sign that the horse is what tops it off. The horse is the cherry on the top. It's like you have this, and then, and this is like what reaches the ultimate perfection. So then we need to understand what does it mean in the spiritual dynamics, in the divine element, in the higher reading of the Megillah that we're reading, in the deeper, godlier story, what does this mean? Maybe, because the Baal Shemta wasn't riding on regular horses. <laughs> he was riding on the horse that that uh, uh, that the king was riding on. Yeah, could be. In can call Iker Shleimus the the Levush Malchus, the Keser Malchus, comes out that the primary uh, perfection of the garment of the king and the crown of the king, is only through the horse that the king was riding upon it. Which through it, Yushlam Inyan Mailas Madrigasam. Only through it will it complete the perfection of all the other items. Dafk. So the same will also be applied above. When we're talking about God's garment of kingship, the Kesar Malchus Anal and the and and the and the royal crown, Shetzrichim Lishlemus Malasam. They require, in order for them to be in their highest, most pristine state, they will only reach it only through the horse that the king rides. So we need to understand what kind of horse is God riding on that adds perfection to his garment and to his crown. The Dailamev, the Indian who, and the idea is as follows. Because for behold, by the giving of the Torah, it says, Kisir kaval susecha, when you're riding on your horses, Mark of Isecha Yeshua. Your chariots of salvation. I think it's a pasuk in Yeshaya. In Yeshaya, it says over there when you're riding on your horses, your chariots of salvation. And now these merkavot, these chariots, Yuvam Bahagdam will be understood by first prefacing Lahavin Beer my Merazal to understand first the uh, a statement of the sages. In other words, we 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 we're going we're gonna to investigate the concept. Does God have a vehicle? Does God have transportation? So we would think God doesn't need transportation. What do you mean God has transportation? God is there. But yeah, God is everywhere. Like, what's this concept that transportation? We need transportation. Yet we find, because here we're saying that during the giving of the Torah, when you, you came riding on your horses, which means he did use some kind of a means of transportation. A horse and buggy. A carriage. And but the sages also tell us, Gimel Shas Rishaynis, Yoshev Hakadosh Baruch Hu Va'Isik Petayra. The first three hours of the day, Hashem studies Torah. That's the first thing in Hashem's schedule. Hashem studies Torah daily. 
Shniyos, the second three hours of the day, Yoshev Adon, Hashem judges the world. Cholu. Then it says the third three hours, I think he 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 he, he gives sustenance. He, he's feeding the entire world. Let's see, there's the third three hours of the day. And then the fourth, I don't remember. Oh yeah, then he plays with the Leviathan. Cool. God, God has playtime. <laughs> when he plays with the Leviathan, whatever that means. Then it goes through a schedule by night. What does he do during the nighttime? And then it says that at a certain, at certain hours of the night, ad balai then, then the, 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 the sages ask, and at nighttime, what does he do? Oh, you know what he does? He goes riding on his on a very light cherub. Kruv is a cherub, like we have on the on the Aron. We had Keruvim. These cherubs, they're like bird, semi-bird angelic beings. And God rides on, he has one that's very light. So it so it's very easy. It's it, it doesn't have it's a weightless cherub. And Hashem rides on it. Vishat Bachai Elef Oilamais. And he soars through 18,000 worlds. Hashem does a, a nightly trip. Shanemar, as it says, Rechev Elokim Ribaisayim Alfei Shinon. The chariot of Elokim, the chariot of the Lord, is 2,000, uh, 20,000. Ribaisayim means two times 10,000. Alfei Shinon. What does Alfei Shinon mean? So this, I don't, I, I don't know what the literal translation of Alfei Shinon. Alfei means thousands. Shinon, I'm not sure what it means, but I do know what the sages interpret it to me. The, the, the sages play with that word, and they say Alfei Shinon means Alfei She'enon, the two thousand years that are not. So what does that do? Instead of it being 20,000, you minus 2,000. So it's 18,000. So instead of saying he rides on 18,000, which means the chariot of God, the chariot of God takes a flight. This, this is how the sages are interpreting it through the 18,000 worlds. How do they get to 18,000? Because it says, riboy, sayim, which means two times 10,000. And then it but, it, but it subtracts two two thousand because it says alfe she'enon. The two thousand alfe is double thousand, two thousand she'enon that are not. So you subtract two thousand, you end up with eighteen thousand, and Hashem rides through the eighteen thousand worlds. Al tikra shinon, don't read it shinon elo she'enon, but rather that they're not. This is a passage in the Talmud. I'm not sure where in the Talmud it is, but there is such a passage that this is. Pretty neat. I always love this Gemara. It's one of my favorite passages of the Talmud. Because only the sages can, only our rabbis can give us God's schedule. They can tell you exactly what he's doing at this hour, what he's doing at that hour. You can get, you can speak to all the wise men in China. And all the wise men from all these, all these uh, great wise, <laughs> no one can give you God's Only the Jewish people have that inside information. Because <laughs> from the 2000 is lacking 2000. So the explanation of the matter is, what does this mean, 18,000 worlds? And what's he doing riding through these worlds on a cherub? What does this mean? So again, you have the concept that Hashem is using a means of transportation. Right? He has a sports car, and he's soaring through 2,000, uh, 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 18,000 worlds. What does this mean? In Etik Nurazal, the sages have instituted, Besederat Filah, in the order of prayer, we find the significance of the number 18. Chai brachis. There are 18 blessings in the Amida, which is the main primary part of the prayer service. And we know that these 18 uh, uh, um, blessings of Shemona Esrei, Keneget Chai Chulia Sashedra, correspond to the 18 vertebrae of the spine. Right? The, spine is a sp the spine consists of these various different linked small bones. And through them runs a, a, a the spinal cord. And that's when the, I think the entire nervous system runs through the back. Okay. And the and the main structure of the body of all the limbs are all hinged upon the spine, right? 
but there are 18 vertebrae. So the sages instituted the 18 blessings of Shmona Esrei of, of our Amida corresponding to these 18 vertebrae. And at first glance, this seems to be a wonder. What's the connection of blessings, of the blessings of, of the Amida, of our prayer, to the 18 vertebrae? However, by way of analogy, who hine? So how does the what, what's the what's the whole point of the of these bones of these bones which we call them the vertebrae of the of the spine? Hine mayach the the spinal cord nimshach mayach sheba roish that plugs into the brain into the moach into the brain. Can you do as it is known? Vahoylech v'nimshach b'shedra. And it's almost like the brain extends itself through the spinal cord. That's why, God forbid, if there's an injury on the spinal cord, it can create uh, paralysis because you're disconnecting the brain from the organs. God forbid. So it's basically, it's bringing the brain down into the, into the spine so that it can connect the brain power to all the, which is the nervous system, to all the, to all the limbs and organs. And it's, it, it gets drawn down into the, into the spine. From the back of the neck. And this is what bonds and connects to all the 18 vertebrae of the spine. The entire structure of the body is built on this, on this uh, thing. And it extends all the way down to the hips. Shesham Gidanasha, which over there is the, the Gidanasha, which is the sciatic nerve. Sheyesh Yenika Lechitzainim, which we know that's the place, the place of contact, where the forces of evil are able to get in. Because we find by Yaakov, when Jacob was fighting with the angel, it says that he fought for all night. And, the, and, the, and, the, and when the angel saw that he's not able to defeat Jacob, he hit him in the thigh, in the upper thigh, and he dislodged his his um, by this the, by the sciatic nerve. That's why we don't eat. This is one part that's not kosher. We don't eat it from an animal. The gid hanash, and the deeper meaning is that somehow the man of holiness is vulnerable by the hip. Where? where the shedra ends. Again, because where does the spine end? It ends right at that point. So at the very, very end of the spinal cord, which means where the, where the moichen, on the last junction, where the moichen, which means the intelligence, the godly intelligence, the holy intelligence, comes to, because the physical anatomy reflects the spiritual anatomy as well. So at the conclusion, at the last junction, where the, where the intelligence, which, which, can, which has godly intelligence, and divine awareness and that's channeled down, down, down into the into the lower parts of the body. On the last and final junction, that's where where that ends. That's where the klipa, the unholy, is able to, God forbid, um, insert itself. Like it says, that Yaakov's um, thigh became dislodged. And we know that this harmed the Jewish people in a, on a very, very, very deep level. Years later, connected to many things. Connected to the generations of Rabbi Akiva when the 10 martyrs were killed. It's connected with that injury that happened in the thigh, the Deir Shal Shmad, all these, all these uh, difficult times when it seemed like the forces of unholiness got the better over the Jewish people. And, and harm them, and so on and so forth, it's related to this engine. And so will also be understood above. So with the 18 blessings of Shemona Esrei. Every blessing is like one vertebrae on the spine. Now, and when you, when you bow, when you say the word Baruch, so we know that when we say Baruch Atah, so by the word Baruch, you're supposed to bow down. In the beginning of the Shemona Esrei. 
when you say baruch ata so baruch you you uh um by by baruch you kneel your knees ata you bend your back and when you get to hashem you stand up so the kneeling the the going the 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 the, the, the process of bowing down happens by baruch now where do we do that by the first blessing in the beginning of it and in the end of the first blessing and then we do it by modem and in the end by baruch by the end of modem so it's in the beginning of however a, um, a kohen would do he would bow by each blessing which means really the concept of bowing down should really be by every baruch but a regular person doesn't do it but the high priest would do it the king would bow down when you say baruch and he would remain in a bowed state the entire the entire Shimon Eser. But 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 other than that, but but you see that the concept of bowing is at Baruch. What's the idea? Because Baruch means to draw down, to download. And bowing means a little what you're doing when you're bowing is you're drawing down, you're pulling the energies down. And 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 and, and the reason there is a baruch by each blessing, because by each blessing you're taking the 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 uh the the influence the the holiness the godliness and you're downloading it into a different vessel see the body is made up of all the organs every vertebrae is connecting to different to different um different organs different limbs that are all or plugging in it's like you have a cord an extension cord with a um with a uh, what are they called uh, an electric strip what do they call it something like that and you have a bunch of of uh what is it called the, the places where you stick it in, the outlets, and you have a lot of, you can plug in many plugs. So basically all the limbs are plugging into the brain through the through the spinal cord, which they're connecting to. And when you're saying the baruch, you're delivering the energy to that particular organ. So in our own, in our own being, you're delivering blessing, godly blessing into the organs of the body but also into the various different components of the, of, the, of the physical universe because the human body and the human being is the center, is the center of, of, is a small world. So when you're directing the energy down, so to speak, into your heart or into your liver or into, you're bringing the cosmic energy into all these various different sections of the world. They have 18 vertebrae because there's 18 descents through the various different levels. And this corresponds to the 18,000 worlds in which your the energy is flowing down 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 to it until it reaches the lowest to it empowers the legs which is all the way down the bracha is coming down so um the the chen yeah the whole bracha bracha come on when you hold your acha chebesha do like one of these vertebrae of the of the spine kashab kareya babarach and when you bow down when you say barach shebe bracha zu kareya um that which is in this particular blessing so then what you're doing is you're downloading into that particular chulia into that particular vertebrae of the of the spine which that vertebrae is a is a a connector and a, an empowerment to whichever organs are plugging in to at that, at that, at that junction, at that place, bechul yezu ashayich lebrachazu into this chulia that is connected into this. Um, how would you call it in terms of a bone? Or you, besides vertebrae, must be another, like uh, links, like bone links, um, that is connected to this blessing. Eki do as it is known the kareyach beboruch v'zayikid v'shem. As it is known that you're supposed to bow down when you say the Baruch, but you're supposed to be upright when you say Hashem's name. Va'kriya, and what is the concept of Kriya? The concept of Kriya, of kneeling, the main point is you're, low, you're bending down your head. What does that mean? You're drawing the Mochen. See, the highest, the energy is where? In the Mochen, in the mind. That's the point of contact where the soul connects to the body, where the divine soul. And on a cosmic level, where God, the Shekhinah, dwells in the world, in the head. But it's not enough for the Shekhinah to dwell at the tippy top of the highest world. It has to be drawn down. In other words, the entire world needs to be infused with godly consciousness and godly blessing and godly awareness and so on and so forth. 
So you're directing that by each blessing, we're directing the cosmic flow. And the point over here is to draw down min from the brain that's in the head, which is the root of this spinal cord. That runs through the 18 vertebrae. The nimtza comes out. The brain of the head is drawn in the spinal cord. And it's drawn and flows through the 18. So, Shimon Esrei, the prayer, that's your spinal cord. Shimon Esrei is not so much the vertebrae. The main point is the, is the, is the spinal cord, but the 18 blessings of the Shimon Esrei is, 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 is bringing it into each link for, for bringing the spinal cord down into each, when the spinal cord is drawing the, the brain energy down into that particular compartment. Now, what's really happening is, on which level are we affecting? We're affecting because we are in the image of God. We're affecting on the highest world, the world of emanation, the sphere out the attributes. You, where is the orange self shorah? Where is the infinite light dwell in sphere of the orange self doesn't dwell in any of the spherot. He dwells only. What's the point of contact where the orange self begins to connect to the concept of, 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 of affinitude, of worlds? The whole connection is in Chachma. But you have to draw, and, and then from Chachma to Bina to Das and the Chabad, way up there. It, it needs to be drawn through all the divine attributes, through the supernal man. And when we say Shmon Esra and we bow down, you're causing the flow on the in God himself you're drawing it first into the divine vertebrae, into the 18 levels of pulling it down, down, down from the roof of Atsilas to the ground of Atsilas. Once you draw it down and fill the divine being with this, with this, with, with the with the transcendental infinite light, from there it now translates into the actual worlds. When it comes into the worlds, it's already, it's it's now transitioning to 18,000 worlds as opposed to the 18 vertebrae of God. Uh, so, the this is in the supernal man above the Atzilus of Atzilus. We are drawing down the supernal moyach, the supernal mind of Chachmi, love the supernal wisdom, that's in the head, through the 18 vertebrae of the spine, the Adam Zekaviyachal of this supernal man, of the godly being called Adam Elyon. And when, do, when does that happen? When we bow down by Baruch. This is the idea of drawing energies down, Lamata, lower, below. And from the Atsilus, you're going to draw it all the way down where? Into the three lower worlds, which are called Bria, Yetzirah, and Asiya, creation, formation, and completion. And like the sages say, The sages say, how do we know that God also prays? So what's basically happening when we are praying, we're activating the prayer above as well. The supernal man is also bowing down and drawing the energy down through his own vertebrae. That's the concept of him davening. Davening means to, prayer means to elicit divine influence down, divine blessing. The dialogue maven as it is enough to those who understand. Until where you're bringing him, and what's the final station? You bring him down to the, to the legs. We said earlier that the, the, the vertebrae ends at, at the hips. And then for there and forward is already the legs, but you've already reached the legs because the last of the spinal cord already is plugging in to the, to the hips, which are the bones, the primary bones of the structure for the legs. <speaking in Hebrew> down to the leg, Shem Gimel. And in Shemon Esrei, what's that? Shem Gimel Brachais It takes us to the last three blessings. Ritzei, Modim, and Sim Shalom. Now, where do you see that this is the level of the legs? You can see it from the fact of the beginning of the blessing. 
What's the blessing? The blessing is modim anachnulach. What does modim mean? Modim means I acknowledge. And acknowledgement is the lowest form of connection. Why? Because you don't have understanding. You don't have an emotional experience. Acknowledging means acknowledge and surrendering. So it's lacking in on the higher levels of the soul, in the higher levels of existence, on the higher worlds, or in the higher sephirot, or in the higher levels of the human experience. Intelligence, you're filled with enlightenment. Emotions, you're filled with an internal excitement regarding this. But then there's a point where you, you, don't, you, know, you don't understand. You don't even have enough um, a de- a connection to it that you can get excited about it. But you can feel its truth and you can surrender to it. Well, that's like the feet. The feet are loyal surrenderers. They surrender. They're just feet, as we call them. They're soldiers, foot soldiers. They don't have to agree. They don't understand what the brain understands, what the mind understands. They don't have the experience of the torso where the emotions take place. But they get the job done. Why? Because they know they are their feet. They know that they are here to execute the commands, to do. They know they're the ones that, they're the laborers. They knew that, they, that the feet know that their job is to just get it done. With what? Without understanding, without identification with it, but just through surrender. So that's where you see that Shemona Esrei, when you're getting to the feet, what's the blessing? Modem. Modem I acknowledge. Um, As it is known, the yarchin, that the the legs, the hips or the thighs, so Ritze is Netzach. The, 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 the blessing before Modim. And um, which mean which Netzach means victory, and Modim is glory, which also means submission. And then what's Sim Shalom? Sim Shalom is Yesod. Yesod means bonding. And we and so with that that corresponds to the um, to the bris, which is the idea of bonding. And we also find and that's why it's called shalom because it bonds, it creates peace between two entities. That's why by Pinchas, who who was Makana, who 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 uh, acted in 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 in, in uh, an act of vengeance for the sake of. The, the protection of the bris because it was a pagam in the in the in the uh, in the immorality God forbid it was in, it was of the Jewish people matters of of so Hashem told him I'm giving to you brisi shalom I'm giving you my bris of peace so shalom is related to yesod so sim shalom is the okay the sham but here's the thing. But because we're talking at the very, very end of the body, so the illuminance of the mind does not reach with such brightness into that level. It's kind of already, it's getting weaker. It's like in the upper parts of the body, it's still very, very potent. But as it's getting down to that level, it's already diminished. The alkane and that, and from there, that's why you find that when the Klippa was trying to overpower Jacob, where were they able to hit him? Not, not higher than the hips. Because higher than that, his holiness was so intense, his attachment to God was so intense, there was not even a tiny little crack. They couldn't get into it. But on the level of feet, that's where there was a, a breach, a possible breach. And that's why they hit him in the thigh. That the 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 chitzonim should be able to get it from from that place. Al came therefore leyerch lubene yisrael. That's why there is forbidden for the Jewish people to eat this sciatic nerve. The al came and therefore be brachis rishainus in the first blessing. Karei abe baruch. One bows down when they say baruch 
You're bowing down the moach. You're drawing down the moichin of the head. But when you get to the latter time, where we're also supposed to bow, you're bowing not by baruch. What are you bowing? You're bowing by modim. Indicating that you're not drawing down the brain anymore on the same level. Baruch means to draw down. Here you're now, it's not, it's not such a clear download. It's not so such such a such a potent flow. That's why you're 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 saying a word substituting baruch. What's that? That's modim, which means it's still it's still arriving, but it's arri- arriving in a in a in a less in a less powerful manner. Only all that it has is haida, which is submission. Because bina reaches all the way to hod. That means like this: bina cannot go further than hod, but it's still. But there's still meaning. You, if that's the case, why are you bowing down at all? Yeah, maybe you can't. You can't draw. It's too low. The moichin won't reach there. No, it says bina. Reaches Bina stops at Hod. It's the influence of Bina is to is to Hod, not further. That's why Yosef, who is Yasod, is motherless. Is a Yasim. His mother died when he was very young. Because Yosef is Yasod. And Yasod doesn't have a mother. Because Bina, which is the mother, doesn't reach Yasod. She reaches mainly to, not that he doesn't have a mother, his mother passed away, which means he's disconnected from his mom. She's farther away from him. Because Bina reaches to Hod, but not to Yesod. Maybe that's the reason why by Sim Shalom, you're not bowing. But by Moedim, you're still, there's still a remnant of a bow. I mean, we see we don't bow by the earlier blessings either, but Avadai Lamev, Om Nam, it is known. Which one? Elakainet Sor is not a blessing. Elakainet Sor is an added prayer. It's not one of the 18. Omnam, however, in a Yidu, it is known, the Iker Chai Berchon, the main concept of the 18 blessings of Shemona Esrei, who bebchina samshach esoivev lememale. The main 18 blessings of Shmona Esrei is supposed to accomplish what? So we're saying you're supposed to bring the Moichin, the Chabad, the, 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 the powers of Chachma Bin Adas, where the Orient Sof is dwelling, and draw it down into the, into the lowest spherot. But the main Amshach is to get it down into Malchus. Because Shmona Esrei is called a Yichud, a Zivug. A ziva between male and female. And malchut is the, is the woman. So you have to really bring it down into malchus. And therefore that's called the unification of the sovev energy, of the encompassing energy, with the mamali energy. Let me explain that for a moment. Malchus being the last and final one of the ten sefirot is really the place where mamala kolalman starts. Because it's real orot bekelem. It's light in vessels. Because malchus is speech, and speech means that the that there's containers, the letters of speech is you're taking a concept and you're putting them into words, you're putting it into containers, into vessels, and through the vessels you're communicating. So the 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 if we to think about on which level does God really really reduce himself to the to the to the level of each creation. That each creation receives a very measured, specified, tailored energy that is particularized and tailored to each to the capacity of every nivra of every creation. That happens through Hashem's speech, where Hashem's differentiated. Let there be light, let there be trees, let there be monkeys, let there be rabbits, let there be chipmunks, let there be flowers, and let there be this type of flower. And, and even though the, the Masara Mamaras, the ten utterances, speak only in broad strokes, but the Alter Rebbe really says that really there's letters for each creature. It's 
by through a, a transportation and transmigration of the letters, it, we've changed various levels. There's a name for every species of animal, which comes from the God really speaks it into existence. That's why each species is different. What does that come from? From the divine speech. So Mamalakalalman is Malchut, is where godliness is very contained and and limited. In a sense, we can say the energy is already reduced in its limitation. And that's what's responsible for creating of time and space and all the creatures that live in time and space. But the point of prayer is not to, not to connect to the godliness of creation. The point of prayer is to lift the creation up, to connect to the orange self, to the infinite light, to God as he's beyond the creation. So to a level called HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Sovev Kalam, the income. And the soul of Kalaman, earlier we said it's Keter, it's the infinite life. But really, all the Sefirot compared to Malchus are called Sovev because their energies are still, are still infinite. Malchus is where God literally contracts himself to the details of every creation. So the main point of Shemona Esrei is to unify the Akadish Baruch Hu, the transcendental energies, all the way into Malchus. This means to draw down from the Ze'er Anpin, which are the six Sefirot above, or sometimes Ze'er Anpin refers to all the nine Sefirot above, all the Lenukva to the female, which is Malchus. That's called HaKadosh Baruch Hu and the Shechin. And this is the reason why that three times in the day that's why we do the prayer three times a day. We're activating this drawing down of the of the moichen and the, all the way down, down, down into the, three times a day, 18. Boiker in the morning, shachrit. V'tzarayim in the afternoon, which is mincha. V'erev in the evening. V'fisha nemar, because it says in the, in the pasuk, Chesed kale kol hayom, that the chesed, the kindness of God, flows all the day. Shebiyoim nimshach pchinas achasadim mitchura lenukva. Since the 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 point of prayer is to help facilitate, to help um um to to help the 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 to stimulate the process. From the mashpia to the makabal, from the influencer to the influence, from the husband to the wife, from the divine male to the divine female, which means drawing down the orange soul. That's a an activity of day, because daytime is we know we know night and day is chesed and gavura. What is chesed? Chesed is revelation. Chesed is kindness. It's revelation from the bestower to the recipient. So chesed is a masculine energy. Um, gavura is a feminine energy. The recipient is gavura. She's receiving, she's taking it into her vessels. Nighttime is feminine time. Daytime is masculine time. That's why the sun, who is male, dominates by day, and the moon, who is female, and has the switch, the whole, the whole, the whole uh, cycle of 30 days, and then a whole system, which is the moon, is Malchus, is female. And the moon rules by night. So the the 12, and if it, if the day is equal, so 12 hours day, if it's now like it's going to be in the month of Nisan, where kind of it's split, day and night is kind of equal. So then it's 12 hours day, 12, 12 hours of male, of, of chesed, 12 hours of gavura. But he says the prayers really belong in the daytime. Even though there is one prayer in the evening, but we do it in the beginning of the night, really. It's it's still connected to the daylight hours. Because the time of drawing Saivev to Mamale, the time of the influence of Chesed energy being from the from the source to the recipient to the vessels, from the male to the female, from the Sovev to the Mamale, is a is a <clears throat> belongs to the realm of day. And that's why we pray that time to activate it, to activate that kindness. And that's why the sages say, 
12 hours is the day, Shehen Yud Beis Tzirufei Havaya, which are the 12 combinations of Yud Kei Vav Kei. Now, when it comes to male and female above, it, in the names of God, Yud Kei Vav Kei is the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and Elohim, or, Al, or A, Aleph Talet Nun Yud, or Ad, Ado, whatever, or Elohim is the name of, of Malchus. So that's her name is Malchus. So, but the 12 hours of the day are the 12 combi combinations of Havaya, of Havaya. Because if you take the four letters Yud Kei Vav Kei, you can combine them in 12 different, in 12 different Saruf, in 12 different ways. Each hour is a different flow of masculine energy from the Soviv Kalaman to the Mamala Kalaman. And I guess the 12 hours are divided into three sections of four. So the, the, the morning hours is Shacharit, the middle hours is Mincha, in a sense, and then the last two is related to Arvit, to the to the evening service. Yud Beis shows him, Am I Yom Shem? Yud Beis Rufa Avaya, Shem B'chol Yom Lamayla, that is above. Shenim Shachet is drawn, Ma'atzilus, from Atzilus, Libya, to Bria Yetzir and Asi. So Malchus, even though Malchus is also in Atzilus, but Malchus is really the mother of the of the three lower worlds. Malchus is called the mother of creation. She's the source already of a fire. She's still infinite. She's still the tail end of God, but she's the tail end of God that is conditioning herself to make space for the creation. That's the whole. That's her identity. Her identity is to be a king. A king can't be a king without 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 us without subjects. So the subjects are the three lower worlds. So therefore, when you say that the hashpa has to go from 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 HaKadosh Baruch Hu to the Shechina, it, it's also like saying it's going from Atzilus, which is purely God, to Bria, to the three lower worlds. The, the mechanics, the inner energy is from HaKadosh Baruch Hu to the Shechina. That's in the divine realm. In terms of worlds, it's going from the divine world, which is Atzilus, which is in general a masculine world. And it's going to the three lower worlds, Bria, Yitzir, and Asiyah, which, which is the female, the recipient. And our avoda during the daytime is to bring to download this chesed energy. Chesed kale, call hayom, not by night. Chesed kale, the energy of kale it descends down, call hayom all the day. It is drawn from atzilus to bri atzir and asiyah. That a chai brachos through the eighteen blessings keshakareya beboruch. And when you bow down, you're pumping that energy. You're hitting the download button. Every time you're bowing. But what is Hashem doing by night? What is God doing? Which is, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the male. Now this is not his time. Like we said before, um, the night is Malchus time. So what is he doing during that time? Malchus. The, the element of night is the concealment of Malchus, in which Malchus is then in her, her in her state. What's her state? Her state is to conceal the infinite, or else, because if she's not concealing the infinite, then there wouldn't be able to be a creation. So Malchus is primarily a, a filter, a powerful filter holding back the, the, the truth of Enod Milvado from flooding the world. Without the Malchus, Enod Movado, that there's none but God, would flood the, 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 our consciousness. And we would all immediately pop out of our, of our stupor of, of silliness of seeing things other than God. And suddenly we would be overwhelmingly aware that Enod Movado does none but him, that God is everything and none but him. Malchus has to keep that in check. And that's what the nighttime does. It, it, it allows for the creation's Kind of every night, if not for there wouldn't be a night, the day, which means the light and the revelation would be too intense. Oh, it's not gonna be night, and then 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 it's gonna be day all the time because the moon will be like the light, because the we've already done the tikkun in the filter, and the worlds are already fully receptive without dissolving, because we strengthened ourselves to be able to live in the light without completely dissolving. 
But but until Mashiach comes, Malchus, it almost seems that if there wouldn't be a night, then the creations would dissolve. We would we would we would pop back into ultimate truth. We would not be able to maintain it. So the night comes every in every twenty four hours period. You have a night time to like strengthen our consciousness, our view, our view of time and space, our view for selfhood, our our view of separation, our view that our view that that nature exists and so on and so forth. It's all because of night, and then comes the day to help insert higher consciousness into the into our nighttime, and that's why creation begins with night, because when God created. The main point of creation was to block the light, to first create first allow the creations to come into existence, and then and then boker means to infuse them and enlighten them with truth. Well, first, we don't know. First, we think that the, the world is godless, or we think that, and then through the work of of, of Torah and mitzvos and prayer, which is baruch. We bring HaKadosh Baruch Hu down into the space of the Shekhinah. We bring enlightenment into our reality. So that's the daytime. Then we start all over again at night on a higher level. That's That goes night and day and night and day. And we we, we, we accomplish this. So the question over here is, is the concealment of Malchus with many contractions in, 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 into the creations? Kamoy Laila Gashmias. And like the physical night, that a person sleeps. The Now, if we look at ourselves as little imitations of God, which God created us to be that way, we're called Adam is called Adam Adam Elyon. He's he's compared to the one above. So when is a human being, we're all supposed to be influencers. We're all supposed to be, you know, projecting of, of who we are and what we are on our environment, what we know, what we care about, what is. But when is a person able to project of their talents, of their abilities? When they're awake. When is that? During daytime. So it's the same idea. But what happens at night? We shut down our influence. We go to sleep. And our, our, our projection of our self into the environment around us stops. It's dark, two o'clock in the morning in every house, sleeping, everybody's. And the house is, 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 is kind of without the influence of the person or the environment or the whatever. Shadam Yashan, and the person is asleep, the Isik Bashpov And the person is not engaged and involved in any kind of hashpa and any kind of influence and any kind of drawing forth of themselves into the world around them. So the same thing happens above as well. When it's night, the, the, the divine kindness of Adam of Atzilus, of the man of Atzilus, does not shine to the three lower worlds. So we don't have that higher element during the night. Ah. Oz, but what happens then? What happens during that time? Who's man shira sabalachin? Nighttime is the time when the angels kick in, and that's when they're singing, which means really very powerful. Daytimes is the time for neshamot for souls, because that's when we make our contribution, drawing God down into the world. Nighttime, the souls go to sleep. And our higher effect that we have, which is much superior to the angels, is not, is not active then. And then we let the angels, you know, do their part. What's their part? What's the shira samalach? Guzman shira samalach is the time of the singing of the angels. That's why it says that the night has three parts to it. And it says these are three, and they're called ashmura. ashmura. Shloishas meshmoirais halayla. Three three guards of the night. These are the guards of the angels that are singing. In every third of the night, a different group of angels are performing. There is a an, an, an evening and a nightly concert going on every night. The various different choirs above. Lefisha, but yud salayla because in the in the twelve hours of the night. And yud based tsurufe adna, the moon is dominating, which means the shekhinah, the feminine element 
is then active. And what is that? That name of God associated with that is Aleph Dalit Nun Yud, which means Adon. Adon means a master. God is God is a master over the world, as opposed to Havaya means he's above the world completely. Past, present, and future. But Adna is already a relationship. God sees himself, that's what the Shekhinah is, as a support and as a, as a force, as a king over the world. So, and, and just like in Avaya, we have 12 hours because there's 12 combinations of the four letters. So in Aleph, Dalet, Nun, Yud, there's 12 hours as well. But these are the combinations of Aleph, Dalet, Nun, Yud, not the combinations of Avaya. So AM and PM is different. The truth is no, because our a, the, the, the AM and PM system is meant that it switches in midday. But in the um, on the Jewish calendar, it's supposed to be sliced like this. Day day hours and night hours. It's a complete different energy. We know that when the Alter Rebbe was in jail, they tr um, purposely wanted to discombobulate him. They put him in a very dark room where you couldn't tell day and night. And the Alter Rebbe was on top of it like a. He always knew what time it was. You know when he has to put on tefillin, and when he has. To. And when they were so blown away in it, they were bothered that they couldn't conf that they couldn't they couldn't throw him off. And he basically told them that he knows time from the, he can sense the, the tziruf. He has an internal clock. And therefore he can sense the time, the, 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 the 12 hours, each hour, which flow of yutke, either it's yutke vavke or alef talet nun yud, depending on what's flowing. And yud beis rufei adna, shubchenes malchus, which is the idea of malchus, sheyeredes lamata, mata. Now she goes down below. It says the Shechina during the nighttime. What does she do? She descends into the darkness, into the lower worlds. In the lower chambers. And that's when she is distributing food and sustenance to all the creations. So it's not like there's no hashpa coming at night. By daytime, there's a much higher hashba. By daytime, it's enlightenment. It's the higher godly revelation that's going to reveal itself in the days of Mashiach. Much higher than physical nourishment. It's the greatest channel. That's happening during the day. Nighttime, the Shekhinah is taking care of her baby, which is the world. And she is distributing life, sustenance, and everything that we need in the material realm. Or into each world for its... You might say not every world is material. They're spiritual worlds. But the basic needs that they need for sustaining, not the enlightenment of God, that happens during the day. But the actual sus sustaining forces, the mamala kalalman energy, see, by daytime, soviv kalalman energy is coming down. Higher energy, transcendental energy. Godly light is coming to the world. But during the daytime, Cre nature is taking place. God is, God is, 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 is infusing and empowering nature. The natural order, the time and space order, including feeding every creature. Kamashakasa, like it says, we're in Eishes Chayel. That's the song of who? The song of the woman. It's the song of the Shekhinah. What does it say? When does she get active? Vatakam bi'oid laila. She gets up when it's still night. Vatitin teref, lebeisa, she gives food for her household. Vatitin teref, she supplies food for her household. And now including in that is, including in the work of giving hashpa to all the creatures, she also goes around and snatches up the sparks of holiness. It's two-way thing. There is a influence but there's also an intake. What is she taking in? All the sparks of holiness that we extracted during the day or during the mitzvot that we did the day before, and they're, they're laying over there and the Shekhinah prowls around at night when we're all sleeping. And she sucks them all up. All these nitzutzim are absorbed in the Shekhinah at night. And they're now being taken in. Batitin teref, and the word teref means on the one hand, teref can mean sustenance. That means she gives sustenance. Teref also means um, chayot torfot. 
So teref means to devour, to grab. Litrof, to grab something. So the word teref, the gamatri of it, is 289, which is one more than 288. 288 is the amount of Nitzutze Kedusha, the amount of sparks of holiness that were that are scattered all, the, in the, all over in the world that need to be elevated is 288 sparks. So 289, 288, as we know, Gematrius can always add up by, by one. Ki Teref is Reish Peches Im HaKolel. Teref is 288 with the with the Kolel. Shohu Pchenes Habirurim. These are these refinements that she is extracting from the klipot, from noga. Noga is the klipas, the, the shells. do as it is known. So very important things are happening at night. What does it have to do with the song of the angels? Because the angels, I mean, he doesn't explain it over here, but probably because the angels are part of the engine of the Shekhinah. They're the Merkava to the Shekhinah. The souls of Israel are the Merkava to HaKadosh Baruch. Our Avais, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov were the Merkava. To who? To the transcendental being of Atzilus, to, the, to HaKadosh Baruch. The angels, they are the Merkava to who? To the Shekhinah. So that's why they're active at night, the angels. What's the activity? Both influencing and, and elevating. That's during the night. The Omnom, however, Zau Dafka, but her power to do both. To what? To sustain and give life to each creature and each being. To give Parnasa to everybody. To be the distributor of life to all of existence. And also to be the extractor of, of energies and lift it into holiness. From when it's in her power to do that she receives from her husband during the day. What did we say? The 18 blessings of Shemona Esrei is drawing down the energy where into the Malchus. Sim Shalom is actually the point of Yesod and Malchus meeting. That's, that's why the main, very important blessing by Shemona Esri is the last blessing, Sim Shalom Tov of Racha, because that's when the entire, it says, that's when the, the, the delivery of the tipa, of the droplet is being transmitted to Malchus. It's when she receives all the potent energy in herself, and then later she can use it in what? In, 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 her, in her influence on the world. So, through the, through the 18 blessings that happen during the day, in which the chesed is active during the day, in which we're drawing down from the supernal head, from the, the brain that's in the head, which then comes down through the 18 vertebrae, and it gets drawn below, below, and how? In other words, we by day, it's delivered only in the headquarters of creation. In other words, during the daytime, it's not delivered all the way down into Bria, Yetzirah, and Asiya. But it's delivered to who? To the mother of Bria, Yetzirah, and Asiya, to the mother of creation. In other words, she receives the sustenance. The Mamala Kalalman gets now infused with the Saiv of Kalalman. The Shechina receives the empowerment from HaKadosh Baruch. But then during the nighttime is when she actually activates her when she runs the whole thing, when she does what she... It's similar to the idea that the, the traditional setup in a family is the husband would go and what, work and bring home the money, bring home the, the sustenance. And from the sustenance that he brings, what does she do? She provides for the family. She'll cook and bake and give and clean and do everything that needs to be done to sustain the household. But with what? With the... With the, with the, with the um, with the, the what he's bringing her and supplying her with to be able to do what she needs to do. So on the 18 blessings of the day, we're bringing down the Parnassah, so to speak, to the Shekhinah. And now during the night, and during the nighttime, she's distributing. It gets down to the world and it gets down to the angels through the element of Malchus. And this is the meaning when it says... Chai Chai Hu 
yoiducha. Simply it means every living being will acknowledge you. That's the simple meaning, the deeper meaning. Chai, chai, it's the, it's the Shemona Esrei. It's the vertebrae of the 18, the 18, that are said, who, this is what, 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 who yoiducha, this is what causes to be praised. Not to figure out what that means. Why, why are we emphasizing who yoiducha? So when it when Malchus now what does it say? What does God do during the night? What did we learn? He rides on a cherub, which is an angelic being, and he soars through the eighteen thousand worlds. Remember, they're going back to what we said. Why? Because by during the daytime, it's much higher than the cherub. Cherubs are in Bria. Cherubs are creations. That's cherubs are for are angels. So during the nighttime, the influence, the divine influence is coming down into the realms of actual creation. And therefore, God is soaring through 18,000 vertebrae. Why 18,000? Because it's a derivative of a much higher 18. What's the higher 18? The 18 blessings of Shemona Esrei, which are during the daytime, which is bringing it to, through the divine vertebrae, the supernal man above, the Adam Elion. But once we draw it down through the 18 vertebrae above, all the way to Hashem's feet, all the way down into Malchus, then by night, it translates from Atzilus into the world, into 18,000 worlds. How is it getting there? We said earlier. The angels are singing Shira. So the Shekhinah is riding, or even HaKadosh Baruch Hu's influence. It doesn't say Shekhinah. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is riding because his influence that he gave her is now being transmitted down into the finite cre creations through this cherub. These angels that are taking it down. Basically, and this is what he's explaining, is, is the divine vehicles. We asked, is, it there, is, there, is there transportation for Hashem? Yeah, at night, there is this. Uh, over there, it's the oil and the light. And the influence, the chai berchoin of the 18 blessings, meschalik lechai elef madregas. So you don't even realize that when you're davening Shemona Esrei, you're feeding the 18,000 worlds which is basically the sum totality of all of existence, of all levels of the creation. You're literally feeding it because you're saying Shemona Esrei, you're activating the shorish and the mucker of all the blessings coming down the, the, the supernal man's vertebrae into Malchus and then from there, yeah. Uh, what, what are the, why 18,000? In different places, it's explained that it has to do with nine sefirot times two. But and how does it translate into worlds? Eighteen, something like that. To the eighteen thousand levels. By God, one vertebrae turns into eight. In, in, when it gets down into the lower world, turns into eighteen thousand. Turns into turns into a thousand. Every level. Turns it like it says by God, one day is a thousand years. One day by God, as it translates into the mini world, it gets down into our realm. One day is in, in the lower world, turns into eight into a thousand days, eight, a thousand years. It says, one day, but you have the same concept that one equals a thousand. It first divides into 10 and 10 to 100 and 100 into 10. No, it gets divided into 10 and 10 to 100. And how do you get then from 100 to 1,000? So you may, so it goes, it, oh, so one gets into 10. And then 10 times 10, and then 100 times 10. But why are you keeping on timesing it by 10? I'm not sure. Okay. Maybe. Okay, so this is the conclusion of this, of this chapter. 
And this is what the sages mean, the secret. What is God doing at night? He's riding on his light chariot, cherub. And he soars through 18,000 worlds. Piddish. Who is this cherub? Kruv, who pchines metat. Kruv, the kruv is the element of the angel called metatrain. Now, if you take a look, metatrain is the chief angel, the chief butler of God that's bringing that. But he, Malach metatrain, I think, is an, is an olam hayatsira, representing the hashpa coming down into the lower worlds. If you take a look at the name metatrain, what, do you, what, 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 what hits you? In the name of Tatrain, the two Tesses. Metat, Tess, Tess. What's Tess and Tess? 18. He's in charge of the 18,000 worlds. He is the vehicle through which Hashem, Hashem directs his energy down into the 18,000 worlds through this archangel Metatron, which Rashi says that Hashem says to Moshe, where, where do we find the Malach Metatron in the Chumash? When the Jewish people were supposed to go into the land of Israel, and they said, to, we gave a class about it this year, Tarshish Mishpatim. They said, they sinned then. And God says, I'm sending an angel before you. I'm not going to go. I'm sending an angel. And Rashi says, this is the angel Metatrin. And you should listen to him. Kishmi Bikirbai, it says, because my name is inside of it. And Rashi brings that the name Metatrin, which his name is the same, is, is like the name, as the same Gematria like Hashem's name. How is Metatroin the same? I think it equals the name Shakai. Metatroin, I think, equals 310. Should we should we figure that out if that's correct now? Let's try. Um, Resha is already 200. The two tests is 18, so 218. Two Mitat plus, uh, plus 440 is what? 218 plus 40 is 268. Nun is 50. Is 268 plus 50 is what? 308. We're there? Plus, yeah, plus Vav is 6. Is 308 plus 6? Is 314. What's Shakai? 314. Yeah. Even with my sleepy mind, we, we figured it out. Okay. Um, so the Piddish Kruvu Pchenes Metat. Now in short, they, we don't say Metat Roin, we just say Metat, emphasizing the two tesses. Shanikra An Pazitra, who he's called the small face. Kravia, what does that mean? One of the things about the cherubs in the, on the, um, on the, uh, Ark where there were cherubs, we know that the faces of the they, they had a human face, but it was baby face. The cherubs were a baby face, so we know God is called man. The baby face represents the small man. In this case, it's referring to Hashem's agent, Malach Metatrain, which is called Anpazutra, the small face, which means, in a sense, the angel over here. It's the Sfirot. It's the attributes, but it's the attributes already translating in the at. It's not the spherot of Atzilus; it's the spherot of Yetzirah. And the reason it's it's nine and nine because the attributes go or or Yashar or they go both ways. I think that's how you get eighteen. So this is the concept of it's called the small face because the angel is totally nullified to God; it's not considered an entity. It's a merkava, completely, completely bottle. It's called a small face. Keravio, like a baby. It's considered already mitigated, mitigated mochen, mitigated mind. Legabe adam, and compared to the vastness of Atsilos, or the world of emanation, which is called a mature adult man, as opposed to the baby. And what does child mean? This indicates on the contraction of the flow. 
Because over here, we need to bring the divine infinite influence and we have to turn it into lunch for, for people to eat. And with godly influence, which is so rich and so amazing, has to turn into what? Tomatoes and peppers and cucumbers and, 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 and strawberries and chicken and rice and all these things. So obviously it needs to be, it needs to go through a major, a major diminishment. And that's the, that's why Hashem is using the Kruv Kal, the cherub. And, and Kal can also mean, it's a lightweight, meaning it's light mochen. It's not, it's not the depth of the mochen. It's very minor mochen, very light. And this is what brings Zebuchadnezz Elef Elef Bechai Elef Oilomois carrying through the the influence into eighteen thousand worlds Shenikroim, which they are called Rechev Elokim, the chariots of God, Ribaisayim, which is we said before two times ten thousand Fachaser Beis Alafim and Ribaisayim, and 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 minus the two thousand of twenty thousand. Okay, and that's why they're 18,000. Kemaimer Rizal is the sage, just say She'enon, that they, these 2,000 are not there. And we once learned the explanation in Hasidus why we first have 20 and then we minus two. Why couldn't it just be from the get go 18? There's a deep secret to that. I don't remember. The Inyanu. And the idea is as follows The Pchinasam Shach of Ashpa, but Sid of Oisius. Sheyoded Balailon. This. Um, hamshacha, this flow and this influence which is finding its way down into the world through God's speech. Remember we said it's going through Malchus, Malchus is speech. Combining the various different combinations of words which these words are activated by night. Sheyoyed belayla, it's going by night. Bipchina You see, the imagery was fantastic before. Okay, so you have this cherubs in which God is riding on and taking it down. Now he's going to demystify it and turn it just into something pure, more simpler. He's going to say what it really means is the words that God is communicating to the word, the, those, that's this cherub because God is speaking suddenly childish, childish language. Instead of God influencing the divine influence of the day, which is very lofty and very, very, very infinite and very godly, God is speaking the language of creation. He's being mashpia through his words. The Shechina is speaking. What is she speaking? That this one should have a couple of dollars and this one should be able to pay their mortgage. <laughs> it's speaking childish, childish needs. To us, it's obviously very important. But from a true perspective, it's all meaningless. So it's like little children playing and they're talking silly, 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 silly discussions. And that's that's the nighttime talk, the nighttime chatter. And that's cool that's going through the cherub. The means of speech, but if the speech is not of the divine caliber. You know, the Zohar says that the, that the, ten, the ten utterances that God spoke to create the world are called milin dehed yaita. They're the words of a simpleton. Vlav oirich the malka, it's not it doesn't fit for the king to even speak these words. It's like a very, very intelligent being, you know, starting to speak like like uh, you know, like an uneducated people who know you know know much and 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 entering and speaking the same type of conversation or words that they have. So this is the idea that it, that's why it's called Kruv Kal. Hashem is tran. Translating godliness into, you know, in Hasidus it says that on Rosh Hashanah we elicit tremendous um, blessing, and and it's deposited up there in our in our account. And then every day during the year, why do we have to? Why do we? We know Rosh Hashanah Hashem decided everything, so why do we have to pray every day? So it says on Rosh Hashanah, it's like we put it into our account. And every day we have to go to the bank and make a withdrawal. Because you, but when Hashem gave it to you, He didn't give it to you yet 
on Rosh Hashanah that he allocated that you're going to have, you know, money today to pay this to pay this bill and that bill and may have this and have that. Hashem gave, he, he directed his attention to you. He blessed you with, with, with blessing. He allocated. So the Samach Tzedek explains that you don't want to draw everything down. You should pray every day and you should have to make a keli for Parnasa, he says. But you don't want to take everything that's in the account down here because then like why? It's cheapening it. You're bringing everything down into luxury and into pasta and, and, and rice. What are you, crazy or something? You want to leave a lot of it to remain in, in, in a higher divine level so that the soul can experience it on, 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 a, on a tremendous godly enlightenment. So this is the idea we're learning. The concept that we're bringing it down, that Hashem is bringing down godly influence into the petty the petty needs of creation, that's called, that's the cherub's jobs. That's the simple words that he's speaking. These are nighttime words. These are the small things. This is through him riding on his light cherub. And he soars in the 18,000. These are combinations of letters, Shanikra Bashem Kruv, which it's called a cherub. Now, isn't that interesting? The word Kruv is the same letters as the word, the same letters as the word Shuisi is Baruch. It's the same letters as the word Baruch. It's just a different combination. Because what did we say earlier? Initially, when we elicit the Orin Sof in Atsilos, the tremendous infinite enlightenment. When do we draw it down? In the word Baruch. So Kuruv is the same idea. It's drawing down. It's just, it's drawing it down in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, on a, on a, on a, on a childish manner, in a creation level manner, as opposed to in, on a divine level. So the Baruch is on an, on a, on a, on a godly scale. The Kuruv is on a creation scale. And it's amateur stuff compared to the maturity of the Baruch. But it's the same letters. What you're basically doing is you're translating powerful infinite energies into bite-sized small pieces that we can handle. So of course we need it. We need these cherubs. Or else we wouldn't we wouldn't be able to receive anything. Shu Isi is Baruch as the letters of Baruch Behepach Isi is with by by converting the letters. Shepchinas Adam de Gadlos because the super the, the mature human, the adult human, the daytime human, Keshekarea be Baruch when he's bowing down when you say Baruch, who Bepchinas Amshachas Moichin de Gadlos. You're drawing drawing down the infinite light, Memoichin Shabarosh from God's brain, Dafka Canal from such a lofty place. But when this vast and powerful um, ideas and powerful energies become contracted, they go into the into the sphere of the angels. Then Balikvul, which are limited creatures, you're, you're, you left the world of the infinite and entered into the world of the finite, Oznik Rekruv. That's when the word Baruch gets converted to Kruv. Behepach is where you converted the letters. And we learned in Tanya that every time you convert your letters, you're already, you're already affecting a reduction. A conversion of letters means reducing the energy. It's, a, it's a, uh, like a circuit breaker. It reduces the energy. It takes it down. It is enough for those who understand. Because the end of the verse where it says the chariot of Elohim. And it's interesting. When it says Rechev, it doesn't say Rechev Havaya. It says Rechev Elohim. Rebaisayim, the, the 18,000. Humasha Kosov. And the end of the verse says, Aleph Talid Nun Yud Bum, Adonai Bum. Right? The Hashem is in them. Why the Shekhinah flows in these cherubs, in these angels. And but then it says Sinai Bakodesh, as it was at Sinai, at the holy event at Sinai. 
So what are we suddenly bringing in Sinai? Piddish, so let's understand. Ad nebom hu malchus. What did we say earlier? That one of the names of Hashem, of the Shekhinah is Elokim, and also Aleph Dalet Nun Yud. So that's what we're saying. Aleph Dalet Nun Yud, Hashem's name as the Shekhinah, Bum, is inside them, inside this chariot, because whose who's light are they pumping? These angels. They're extending the energies of the Shekhinah to, to, to bring it down to the creation. It's the element of Malchus that is enclosed in this chariot. Shenikra that is called Rechev Elokim, that is called the chariot of Elokim. Rechev the Shem Elokim Davka. It's the Rechev of the name of Elokim. Now watch this. Just like it is drawn the influence of Elokim, which is either Elokim or the name Adna, which in this case is interchangeable because they're both symbolizing the same idea. The influence that is related already to creation. The influence that's related already to the finite worlds. The influence that's already reduced that can come through the cherubs, as we discussed. Through the combination of letters of the Kruv, which is being brought down and channeled down through angels that have an end to them, that are limited. Is also drawn down through the combination of letters, and a flow of divine energy. But here, watch this. May ain't soif baruchu from the infinite one. B'Torah, in the Torah, shenitna bahar sinai. That was given in Har sinai. Ooh, when the God spoke the words of Torah to us, he also gave us a very physical Torah. And in a sense, you might look at the Torah and see it as a very petty type of a document. And what is it talking about? Also all the worldly things in this world. But the source of the of what is being carried through these letters, this is not Milin the Head Yaita. God is not speaking over here. Milin the Yaita, like Asarama Morris, the ten utterances were cheap words compared to God's royal, royal ability to speak, to truth to his majestic speech. This is considered speaking like a peasant. When did God speak his royalty? When did God convey his true, godly, majestic, deepest ideas and thoughts and philosophies? Where? In the Torah. Although he packaged it in simple things. Because he brought it all the way down to this world. That's why over here, by the giving of the Torah, God also came through vehicle in other words over here he also needed means of transportation but the caliber of this transportation is infinitely higher than what what the cherubs because those are the cherubs of elokim they're the cherubs of aleph dalet nun yud this is the cherub of anoichi hashem elokecha of god's very infinite self and that's who has that that's the horses that's the spirit the letters the words of the torah the holy words of the Torah, which God is using to communicate his ain self to the world, they're called the divine horses that were at Sinai. Mark of Isaiah, Yeshua, your chariots of salvation. Super cool, no? Now we learn over here, um, the Zehu, and this is why at the end of that verse, what is it? So after it speaks about Rebbe Sinai, what would we derive what God does during the nighttime? What do we say? Sinai Bakodesh. The same thing happened at Sinai, Bakodesh, from a transcendental place, from a place of holiness. Again, because when Moshe came down from Har Sinai, at the end of 40 days, what does it say? Hashem said, Make for me a base on Migdash. I will dwell amongst them. He wants to show how low God is coming. He told us to build him a, 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 a home. And God will manifest in that home. In what? In the materials of this world. Which the Mishkan was made up of. A very physical 
Mishkan made up of the materials of this world. Kumaizav, a cast of gold, silver, unachoshes, and copper. The Yiriyos v'krashim. And there were these, these curtains, these tapestries. V'krashim and, and beams. So God is coming all the way, all the way down into our miniature time and space bound miniature world. And that's the reason why it says, You are riding when you came riding on your horses. When? You came riding on your horses. Comes out that the letters of the Torah, literally the letters of the Torah that are communicating God to us, they are the horses that the king was riding on. These hamshachas, these flow of the divine that is in the Torah are called horses. Because the combination of letters which are pulling the idea. What, 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 what's the idea of letters? What's the idea of words? When you take words, words are made up of letters. When you take the various letters and form words and then you form from words, you form sentences, what are you, what are you doing? You're creating a channel through which you can transport a concept. I want to transport a concept from me. I have the concept now. It's not by you. If I want to transport it to you, I got to put it into words and then dispatch these horses that way. And the horses that are running from me to you. I got horses running all over YouTube. Hey, how do you like that? <laughs> it's cool because I know the people listen across the world. So we got the horses running in cyberspace, right? In any case, so we got horses. So God's horses are running, which are the letters of the Torah, and they're transmitting the divine down here into this world. Shanik um, ki'in yanasus, because the concept of a horse, who pchinas is galus ha'or, shem is gale v'yored What does the horse do? The horse enables a person to be transported to a faraway place. If you're going into the neighborhood market, the shop, you don't take your horse. Unless you live in California. When you drive to your neighbor's house, you drive. But if you're not, if you're living in New York or any normal place, <laughs> I don't know what's normal anymore. But in any case, you walk. But if you're if you're going far away, you got it, you got it, you got it, you got to get a horse. That used to be a horse. Today's days, the horses are the modern horses, the Uber, the Lyft, and all this. <laughs> they and what do they do? They enable the person to go to reveal themselves to a faraway place. So that's the point. By the giving of the Torah, God revealed Himself in a very faraway place. God came down to a hick town, <laughs> all the way down here, which is a little village, and to manifest Himself down here below. So he came with the horses. His pchinas is galus oyshem is galav yoyed lamata. It comes down below. Shazal nimshal asus, which is compared to a horse, come out derech marshal. Like by way of analogy, al yedei hasus through the horse. A rider can come to a very distant place. The descent of the light to come below. Without the words of the Torah, we would know nothing about God. Nothing. The Torah reveals Hashem to us in this world. Below, below. Um, to a very distant place. Is this through the combination of letters? Harbe. Many letters, they carry the light because the light itself is abstract. It's just pure light. But when it comes into words, it gets chopped up into, into a delivery. It, it's a, it, now it's, it can be, and the, and the words of a courier, they carry it like the mailman. They carry it. And that's why they're like horses. And bring it to a far place. And this is the idea that the chariot of Elohim, which is the ten, which is the eighteen thousand. But there's two types of, of words. There are words that sustain creation, and there are words that bring enlightenment, the divine divine enlightenment to the creation, which is much higher than the words that sustain creation. The chariot of Elohim versus the chariot of Anoichi Hashem Elokecha, which are the horses. Now in, in, in Parakut Chesi says, 
Now there's many types of letters. So for example, there are letters of the intelligence. That means that every concept, any intellectual, any idea, any formulation of a concept of an idea in a person's mind, we're able to experience it in our consciousness through words. Without words, immediately. You have an idea and immediately appears with words. Every concept always has words, letters, because when you're thinking, you're thinking in words. And that's called and then you can convey it because if you're giving over and if you're transmitting something of intelligence then you're speaking intelligent words and those words are carrying a concept they're carrying a an intellectual idea but then there is also a person can speak emotional words you can speak words of love you can convey love to someone you can convey discipline to someone you can speak threatening words where you're taking your emotion of gavura and you're and you're and you're and you're conveying it through words. So the are the words of the emotions, and they are the words of the intellect. There's the words of kindness, and there's the words of severity. You know, a letter from you know uh, a lawyer suing, you know, saying uh, you're under suit is a threatening letter. It's gavura diga letters. A letter, a beautiful uh, a love note, is a letter of kindness, of chesed. So it depends on what the message is. And there is netzach letters, victory. There's, there's every, every, all different, and they're called different horses. They're all, they're all horses, but this is the horses of the intelligence. This is the horses of the heart, the horses of the emotions, and so on and so forth. And then there are just plain empty horses that have... <laughs> Words that have no content at all and no meaning at all. They're just meaningless words. Silly words. Nothing. There's the letters of the intelligence and Oisis Shenikrasusim. They're the letters that are called horses. They're the chariot. To the radiance of the mind. Which through these horses, through these letters, it, you can carry a concept, an idea below. And then there are the, the letters just of thought. That means if you're thinking, but it's not necessarily deep, deep intelligence. It's just, you know, light thought. And it's a different type of letters. They're the chariot to the thought, to bring her, to bring it there. Oh, it, there's definitely a big difference between letters in which the intelligence is 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 inserted in them the, the, that they're carrying the mind, they're carrying the the, the deeper the deeper higher intelligence. <laughs> to the letters that are plain, just thought without without intelligence. <laughs> in the letters of speech. <laughs> It's interesting. He's not speaking so much. He is speaking about intelligence versus emotions, but he's also speaking in the quality of the letters themselves. That means that the letters that convey, we're not talking about when a person is speaking. He's not, I made a mistake before. I mean, I jumped too far ahead. When he mentioned before the letters of the Seichel, he means the, the letters that are that the person is experiencing in their own mind to themselves because you don't you can't experience any concept without letters in your own head. But the letters, those horses that are revealed, because and again, horses are to, are the same, are letters which the, the concept is to to bring something from a hidden state to a revealed state, to transport something to an open space, to a lower space. So when the subconscious mind or the higher mind, which is pre-consciousness, over there it's higher. When it's delivering a concept, it needs to do it through horses. What are those horses? Those are the letters. But those letters are very, very refined. Sometimes when you're thinking a deep concept, you don't even realize there are words in your head. You just see a light. You see an idea. 
because the le there are letters there. It's impossible to have any revelation of the soul without letters. But those letters are so, so refined that you don't notice them. It says the letters of Chachma are very, very benign. They're like uh, clear letters that you don't even see them. You just see the light shining through them. The letters of Bina are a little bit more sensed. Because when the, when the sharpness of the first initial flash goes away and now you're analyzing, you can hear more you're talking. You can hear more the words because the left side of the brain is more wordy than the right side of the brain. The right side of the brain is more like a picture. The left side of the brain is more analytical and therefore it's words. And then you have the letters where it's not, but, but it's still intelligence. So there are the higher caliber letters. Then there's a letter of thought, which is just the stream of consciousness when you're not thinking anything deeply, but it's still the letters of thought. And here you can hear much more words. The letters are more pronounced than when, they, when, when they're servicing the intelligence, then it's much less wordy. But if you hear, you hear more of the words, because the main point of it is the words. Then there is the letters of speech, where the letters are far, which the letters are chunkier because there's a physical element there. The letters of speech are articulated. They have breath. They're made up of breath. And the vocal cords, they become far more, and to the point they become so dense that other people can hear these letters. When your own letters of thought, other people can't hear. Unless you're a big tzaddik, you have a very refined consciousness, you can hear other people's thoughts. It's to be a more, a more of a of a of a of a, of a, of a subtle, of you have to have very very fine receptors to be able to hear them, right? Because letters of speech are thicker, so you see the different levels of horses. The hen, as he says, the oisis adibur, the letters of speech on oisis amavate. These are the letters that are expressed in the mouth. Aleph ches hey ayin magare. Those are the letters that come from the throat. The aleph, the ches, the hey, the ayin. And then there is the letters that come from the lips and so forth. But even though they're physical letters, they're really the spiritual power of speech connects to them. The, 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 the spiritual power of speech that the soul is a ruach mamalala, a spirit that speaks, Murkaban goes into this, joins these horses, these physical letters. And interesting, even though a little child, for example, has the organs of speech, but since they can't connect their ruach mamalala, their spirit of the talking spirit, there's a lack of maturity in their soul to be able to communicate. So the fact that they have the faculties of speech all programmed, it's not latching up. It's not hooking up with the spiritual letters. There's still a disconnect between the spiritual letters of speech and the physical letters. And that's why there is no speech able by it. can't say anything. Yeah. No, he's saying the opposite. I, 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 I forgot to say at the beginning of the class that I didn't prepare today's class. I mentioned it. I'm learning it without preparation. No, I'm not going to say anything. But a few weeks ago when I prepared the whole discourse, when I was in Palm Springs, and that one, one day I went through the whole thing <laughs> quickly, I, I briefly, and, and, and then I came back and I, but the other parts that I did till now, I reviewed each time I was going to teach. But today, because I had this event, I didn't get a chance. So I'm, I'm relying on what I learned weeks ago. So I don't remember. I'm just, I'm guessing what's going to be next. So I'm, I'm getting a little bit more interrupted over here. In any case, it's funny because because you mentioned it. The only class that I really, really, really didn't prepare, <laughs> I didn't say it. Um, just so, but he's saying the what was he saying the opposite? He's saying that a child has a human spirit to him, is a human. If he's a human, a human spirit is a talking spirit. So, if so, why can't the child speak? They can't speak because their ability to connect their spiritual speech to the physical organs of speech has not yet reached the maturity. As the body grows, 
and the, the physical body grows and it unlocks the, the physical organs of speech to be more, more um, tuned in to the spirit, to the soul. So the, 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 the power of the spirit of the spirit that speaks, like, 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 for example, the letters of thought are able to hook on to the, are able to um, articulate themselves through the physical organs of speech. And then you can talk. So what does that mean? The physical, in the world of speech itself, the power of speech is like the human and the physical letters, the physical letters, which are come from the organs of speech, they're the horses. Because they bring it into physical um, sound waves. Without the breath and without it, it's not, there's no sound waves to carry it and to bring the idea to the outside. What's the whole point of speech? To bring something, what's the whole point of the horses? To bring something, to take the person far away. In our case, to be able to bring the person's abstract spiritual side into revelation to other people. How do you do that? It needs the carriers to carry it. In this case, it's the physical letters of speech, which is not developed yet within the child. So you have a human without horse skill, without horses. So the child is locked, and therefore what the child told the two-year-old, they're locked in their own world. Think about it. They're locked in their own world. As long as you have kids with autism, they're locked in their own world. They can't speak. Which means because they don't have the horses to be able to like, they, they don't have vehicles. Like a person who doesn't have a vehicle. So you're locked in your city. If you don't have no train or no helicopter or no plane or no Uber to pick up or no car to drive, then you're staying home. So a lot of people, sadly, or a child is closed in their own world because until they're able, I mean, mom and you can cry and make noise, but it's not really a full communication. You really can get it until you can talk because that's when the, the horse, in other words, Matt, when your child starts speaking, they open up their horse stable and the horses appear. How did he look like that? That's why your speech therapists that help. Yeah, like spiritually. It's, the, it's the ability to be able to communicate. No, obviously, but if someone had a hard how do you come? How do you de how do you develop your malchus, which is the ability to project and to communicate? Of course, there's the mitz the mitzvahs that are in malchus that probably have a segula kind of effect. And and what would be the exercises? The exercises would be uh, to uh, probably do it bit by bit in small little increments. And yeah, agam. Um, just like a person cannot ride without a horse. That's why it says, That's why it says, when you're when God, by God as well, it says when he's riding on his horses, it says, your chariots. It doesn't say um uh it could have said in Belosh and Yachid. How would you say in singular? Mar, mar, markavat, I think, yeah. Mar, markavat Yeshua, a chariot of salvation. It doesn't say that. Markivotecha means your many chariots. Because Hashem's communication is on many levels. All the spherot, all the divine attributes are all using their horses to communicate in the Torah. That's why it's Mark of Isaac, all aspects, all elements. Lashen Rabbim, Shem Chinnis Tzirufe Oisi is the Chachmi Allah. These are the Tzirufim, the, the combination of letters of the supernal Chachma, the Torah of Torah. Shem B'Shas Matan Torah, which came down at the time of the giving of the Torah. Shem Oisi is V'Susim Ayois and Nailim. These are the highest type of horses. Kishar Shanu Gambala Mailam and Achachma. Because they're rooted even higher than Chachma. In other words, it's not only because God didn't only communicate his conscious mind, he communicated his subconscious mind, in a sense. He communicated from Keter, from the Ain Sof, that's beyond, Anoichi, that's higher than Avai. Like it says, Chachma comes from a place called Ayin. 
And the letters of Torah are communicating the ayin that's beyond Chacham. Pirish me ayin mekadmus haseichol from the pre-intellect, or what we call moyach stima, the concealed moach. Shenikra makara chachma, which is a source of wisdom. Oy chachma hagedumo, or the primordial chachma. O kedei sheyum shechma me'ayin de kadmos ha'seichol, in order that it should come from such a lofty place, from the nothingness of the primordial intellect. Hainu ha'yedei b'chines oisi is the chachma hakduma. These are through the letters of chachma hakduma, of the ancient chachma. Shemur kebehem kadmos ha'chach, which just like we said before, in letters of speech, it's murkav in them. It's it's imbued in them the ruach mamalala, the the the, the 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 spiritual power of speech. And in the letters of thought, is 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 murkav with them the koach hamachshava. And in the letters of bina, is murkav the power of bina. And the letters of chachma is murkav the power of chachma. So in the letters of kadmus aseichel, is murkav the kadmus aseichel itself, which is uh, kadmus achachma. And he goes higher than Chachma completely. There's the letters that convey will. And higher than will, and there's the letters of, of pleasure, which are the most inner, inner, inner letters of the, of the, of the super soul. Each one has their letters, which are their horses, which bring them out. That they're intertwined in them, valyodem, and through them, yumshachu begiloy lamata. They're going to be drawn down in a revealed way below. And even in ratzon and in tainog, in desire and in pleasure, there is an external desire and external pleasure, which is mixed with something else like a desire that's mixed with logic. In other words, there's a reason why you want. Or there is a pleasure that's a pleasure that comes from something, like a pleasure that you have in music, or pleasure that you have in visual, seeing something really beautiful, or a pleasure that you have in intelligence, in ideas. Is it? So this is all called tainug hamurkov. It's pleasure that's, it's not pure pleasure, it's pleasure with something else. But then there is a level called pure will, will that is not mixed with anything else. The pure soul itself, without any tainting, it's not built on anything, just the, the rot zone of the, the purity of the soul itself, without any, any hindrance, without any limit, just allowing that inner will of pure will. And even deeper than that, it's the pure pleasure. Pleasure that is emanate, it's, it's, it's almost like the pleasure it says, of, of just purely being, not pleasure from something outside of you. Just the pleasure of, of the being itself. In, in, in Kabbalah, it's called Shashuye HaMelech Pa'atzmusay, that God delights in himself himself. That, that level. Even that has horses, and even that was communicated by the giving of the Torah. It's, it's, it's these letters of the Torah which are drawing from the deepest letters of, 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 and that's called Keser Shebe Keser. Keser is Ratzon and Tainu, desire and Keser really is three levels. Kadmus Asechel, that's one level. It's called Moyach Stima. And then there is Ratzon, which is Erech Anpin. Then there is Tainu, pleasure, which is Atik Yomen. And then there is Keser Shebe Keser, which is, which is Pneumius Atik Yomen, the inner, inner dimension of Atik Yomen. This is what we spoke earlier. We spoke earlier that when you do mitzvahs, what are we, what are we stimulating? The pleasure of the pleasure, the essential pleasure of God. The keser of kingship that we discussed earlier. So, And we stimulate that when we do a mitzvah. But without the horses, it remains hidden up there. It, doesn't, it can't be communicated down here. It remains. The Lavush Malchus, the garment remains hidden. The king is wearing his garment. He's wearing his crown, but he's locked in his palace, not outside. The horses is very important. Because the horses allows the king to parade out with all of that. And our case is to transport all of that from the sublime inner, 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 inner higher, 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 inner, inner element of God and to bring that down into our reality. To communicate that into this world. She, um, with all of this, you have say that I'm 
With all of this, we'll understand the order of levels. Now we'll be able to understand this all according to the verses that we mentioned earlier. The lowest le le level of letters, the cherubs, remember we spoke about the cherubs, they're bringing down the power of Aleph, Talad, Nun, Yud. They're the, the God's, Malchus is, is Malchus is Peh. Malchus is God's power to speak. The letters are actualizing this speech. Like we spoke earlier, like the, like the organs of the mouth that allow for the speech of the soul to, to be activated. So these angels that are called the cherubs that draw down God's speech, they're like, they are like the physical containers that are carrying down, the, that are carrying Hashem's speech outward. That's the most external level of the divine being transmitted. That's why we say Adnebam. That Aleph Talad Nun Yud, which is the lowest name of Hashem, Bum is in them. Shehen Amalachim, which they are referring to the angels. Shem Bchinis Merkava, which they are a chariot, Lebchinis Adibur Elyon, to the supernal speech. Shu Shem Elokim, which is the name of Elokim, the Shem Adna, and the name Aleph Talad Nun Yud, which we've discussed already earlier, that Aleph Talad Nun Yud and Elokim in general represent the same level. They're the words of speech, which in the breath of his mouth, God creates all the, all the hosts. With the, spirit, with the breath of his mouth, he creates all of creation and all the hosts, all the angels. But that's a general breath. Now, how does it become articulated in individual, into individual trans, transmissions, individual communications? Part of that is through the angels, which is the, which the angels over here, are, are the couriers of it, which are the speech, the particular messages that he gives. They are called the most inferior horses. It's the lowest stable above. And then there's a higher set of horses. That's the 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 the, the light cherub. Why? Because when it says that God rides on a cherub, it doesn't say the Shekhinah. It says HaKadosh Baruch Hu rides on the cherub. So the cherub is a, is a, a notch higher. It's not a vehicle. The, the, the angels, the Malachim, the lower ones, they're called the Rechev Elokim. The Kruv Kal is the cherub that's already for HaKadosh Baruch Hu's energy. Earlier, we, th we were kind of like, I was kind of like associating both as the same level. But here we see it's a different level. This is the, 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 the actual, the words of the Shekhinah. And this is the messages coming from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which is the transcendental light coming through the Kruv Kal. It would be like the difference between the letters of speech and the letters of thought, which is a more inner, 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 inner revelation. See, Metatron, that we spoke before, the angel Metatron, I told you, is the, is the six spherot of Yetzirah. So that's the primary channel for the Shekhinah. But the six spherot of Bria, Bria is higher than Yetzirah, of the world of creation, which is higher than the world of formation, they are the, this is the, this is the Kruv Kal that carries what? The HaKadosh Baruch Hu rides on it. Balayla, by, by, it's, still, it's still small because it's still by night. It's not like Baruch, it's still Kruv. It's still mitigated because it's transmitted to the creation. It's the words of HaKadosh Baruch Hu reduced to the creations. So it's Kruv, it's not Baruch. But in the daytime, we get Baruch itself. We're communicating Hashem's words as they are on a purely godly state, not, not translated into the Kruv language. This means that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which is higher than Shechina, which are the emotions of Atzilus, who he is writing on the letters of thought. Which really, if you think about it, most thoughts that a person has, if you just let your thoughts round wander, 
they will they will serve your emotions which means you'll think what you're afraid or you'll think what you're like love or you think what you're dreaming of which are usually like dreams are based on what your passions are and desires are so you see that is 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 a vehicle to express mainly emotion Just like the emotions of the heart, that find expression in the combination of letters that are of thought. But then there is higher than this. Are the letters of the emotions themselves. Not the letters of thought that the emotions ride upon them, but there is the letters of the emotions themselves. For example, oh, I was talking earlier because I thought now, oh, this kind of knocked off my whole example that I gave, but it's not. Because when you're daydreaming and you're just like, you know, taking a, a rest and you're just allowing your mind to wander, you're not actually beginning with an emotion. And then what's happening is the leftover of your emotions that are there, like the excessive emotions that are that are on the outside of your heart that are kind of always bubbling, leftover bubbles of your emotions need are finding expression now. But it's different than when you got angry, for instance, and now you're thinking thoughts that are here. You have the emotion itself is coming out on words, or when you're experiencing intense love for somebody or something, then this is called the, the thoughts of the emotion itself, as opposed to the residue of the emotion that's just riding on top of the thought. See the difference? That's that's just, just like because the the overflow of the emotions. Is pouring into thought. But then there is the oisius of the machshava itself, of thought itself, their letters. It's a deeper level. Now, Vizet Inyan, and these is, okay, so what are they? Watch this. If the, if the angels of Yetzira, which is Metatrain, are the letters of speech, they're the, the, the couriers, they're the horses for the speech, for the Shechina. The, the six emotions of the six. Spheroids of Bria are the channels. That's the Kruv Kal. That's the cherub that carries the 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 Oisius, uh, the 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 the, 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 amachshava, the letters of thought. The and let's go deeper than that. What's deeper? Um, the, the Midos themselves, in 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 which. Where, where do they, what are their letters? You ready for something really super cool? The six colors that we find in the Mishkan. The Mishkan, Sheish, that everything that was made in the Mishkan was made up of blue wool, purple wool, Tredes Agamon, Telashani red wool, Sheish, which is linen. And, oh wait, and Zav Vakesef. Wait, wait, wait. No, no. How do you have Sheish Mazar, Tcheles, Argamon, Telashani? Yeah, these are four. Zav, Kesef. That, no, that's not six. That's already... Why are you going to say only Zav and Kesav? Why doesn't he say Nechoshes? Sheish Marjar Tcheles Hargama Tel Hashani. Zav and... What happened with Nechoshes? Mamanashach, if you're counting the Zav and the Kesav as a color. Linen is white. And it is a color. And he, and he and enumerates that specifically. So what does he mean, the six colors of the Mishkan? I don't know. So I was thinking maybe he means the garments of the, the garments. But if you, if you count the garments, in the garments you don't have silver. You had gold, but you didn't have silver. 
And in the tapestries, you had both gold and copper. Because the, 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 the higher tapestry, the, the goats here was made with copper, copper hooks. And the lower one was made with gold. So, but, but he counts over here. I don't know. I'm not sure what he means, Dafka, the six colors. So like it says, make for me a, 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 a sanctuary, a and I will dwell amongst them. And we find that the Migdash is called the Mishkan, the Migdash who bepchinas kelim, the Aina Oisius, the Midas, or Mishkan, bepchinas Sadibur, the Malchus, Shemekabelis Mazah. The difference between the Mishkan and the Migdash is that Mishkan is more Mishkan for Malchus and Migdash, because Mish, ah, if you hear the word Mishkan has the word Shechina in it. The word Migdash has the word Kodesh in it. The difference between Migdash and Mishkan is Migdash is a much higher level. Because Migdash is a, is a vessel for HaKadosh Baruch Mishkan is only a vessel for Shechina, which is a lower level. That's why he says that the, 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 six, the six colors of the Mishkan were, look what he says, were um, the, the Migdash Hubchinas Kelim, Haino Oisius, the Midais, these are the letters of the Midais, who Mishkan Hubchinas Adibur, the Malchus Shemekabelas Meza, and the Mishkan is the Dibur of Malchus that receives from the Zerab. Okay. I'm not exactly clear. So we have the letters, the horses, the expressions of the emotions, which are the colors that can conveyed in the different colors. Because you understand that every color is an, is an expression of a different one of God's emotions. As we know, Tcheles is Gevura. White is Chesed. Um... Which one is Teferis? Argaman. Purple is Teferis. Different colors. Ulamailam is then higher than this, higher than the letters that expressed in the colors of the Mishkan. Umashakas of Sinai Bakodesh is what we said earlier at Sinai in holiness. What is that? Those are the letters of the Torah. And they're conveying God's intelligence. Shem tzerufim the chach tzerufim the chachmi law. They are the combinations of the supernal chachma. Shenim shech besinai that is drawn at at Sinai liyaz gilui or the chachma the Torah that the light of the wisdom of Torah should be al yadam through them lamata down here be knesses Yisrael amongst amongst Israel. Knesses because we said earlier. Well, lamaylam is then even higher than that which was revealed. Divine intelligence who knesses oisias ayoy senaylam she bekeser. These are the letters of the crown. Shebezen Nemar, which on this it says, higher than Sinai Bakodesh. Kisirkav al Susecha, when you were riding on your horses, hear the next word, Markavisecha Yeshua, your chariots of salvation. Now, salvation, Yeshua, the root of Yeshua is the word Sha'a. Sha'a is Shin Ayin, which represent the 370 lights of Keser. Which is a Kabbalistic idea that, that in Kesser there are 370 lights. Shin, or or sometimes it calls it three, 375 lights. Shin Ayin Hein 375 lights, the root of the word Yeshua, the Kesser of Kesser, Bechachma, to reveal the Kesser into Chachma. That's what the horses do. Take the Kesser down from the pre consciousness into Chachma, into wisdom. And even higher than that. Until the Kesser of the Malchus of the Ein Sof, which is really Atzmus himself. Which is the pleasure in the garment of kingship. All of that. Each one has its own letters that are connected to it. That it, that it embeds itself for it to be able to come to a revelation below. And now we'll understand what it means. And the horse that their king was riding on it. Ah, suddenly are gone. All the, mil all the millions of horses are gone. 
Haman mentions, take the sus, the horse that the king is riding on. You know what we were going for? Because all the all those horses, that's right, for what Haman said, there you go. But all of that, Haman cut right to the chase. He passed all the levels. He passed all the stables. He went higher and higher, and he says, I want the horse that the quintessence of God is riding on. Higher than all these divine manifestations. You see, when you, here's, here's the thing. If you're trying to convey and reveal, if you're trying to convey intelligence, you need many horses because the intellect is made up of so many pieces and ideas. If you're trying to convey the outside will of a person, there's a whole bunch of wills and desires. No matter if you want to convey your thoughts and your emotions, it's so complex. So how many emo, how many horses are there? So many different stables and horses. But once you're getting to the simple will and the simple pleasure, over here, it's not complex. It's just pure simple. All it needs is one horse to convey. It's a simple sound, like the sound of the shofar. It's like one sound. It's a pure tekiah. It's just one. It's there's there's no complexity here. So that's why he's asking for one horse. It's one horse. The one horse, the king's, like an, like in every, the truth is that in every stable of the royal stables, there is the, there is the stables that they parade, the knights ride on, and the, and, and, and these, um, you know, uh, other officials ride on in the parade. They're all the people that go riding. But then there is that magnificent, magnificent one horse. That that's the king's private horse. That's like you know they they, they say that Alexander was riding on the horse. He had a crazy horse when he went out to Alexander the Great when he went out to wars. This is the horse the king himself rides on. Masha Masha they are all derivatives of this one horse. They're the grandchildren of this one horse. But there is this one horse. This was by the giving of the Torah. Because the origination of the supernal wisdom of Torah, it's originating in the place of the simple pleasure of God. Canal, the Venimtza comes out. And this is the conclusion. There's no completion to the crown of the king and the garment of the king if it doesn't have an ability to express itself. Only via the horse that the king rode on. Which this in, completes their main quality because the honor and the greatness and the splendor that's in the in the in the greatness of the of the of the of the, of the, of the royal crown in the loyal garments is only when the king can parade with them with his horse only when they come out in a manner of a chariot and this is on the horse that the king rides with Question is only, why in the world is this being given to Haman? Like, how does Haman get access to this? And why Why? Why is this, you give it to Haman, and, and then later he dresses Mordechai. So how does that work? Um, yeah. You know what? There's a tiny little more, because the, the, if we finish your test, we finished the primary suya. So if you don't mind, 15 minutes, okay? Okay. <laughs> All these incredible high levels, which is the garment of the king, the keser malchus, and the crown of the king, the sus and the and the horse that the king is riding, that was at the giving of the Torah, all of it was revealed to the Jewish people. In the days of Mordechai and Esther, the entire apparatus came down. 
Because then there was the conclusion of the recipients of the giving of the Torah. Because they received it in their souls. That which, that which they had begun and initiated at the giving of the Torah. At the time of the giving of the Torah. They only started. When they said Nasa, remember we said Nasa means we are completely surrendering ourselves with the simple will of our essence to you, God. It wasn't complex because complexity is begins with let me hear first, let me think it through, let me understand. It was God, I'm giving you the entire me. Everything about my entire, my essence is to you. And that's why they elicited from Hashem too that God is communicating his essence and, and therefore it comes down through that one horse. Sus. So by the giving of the Torah, they pulled the essence through their essence. But it wasn't tested yet. It was a, it was a commitment. But in the days of Mordechai, Hayagamara Kabbalah was the, 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 the culmination of it. Yes, Lohovin, we need to understand. We would ask a question. Why do we say that in the day of Mordechai was such a great merit like Yisrael, Yosef and Bizma Matan Torah? What was so great by the days of Mordechai more than the giving of the Torah? Sha'amru Nasa the Nishma when they said we will do and we will hear. And the idea is Hagam Sha'amru Nas Nasa Bizman Matan Torah. Even though they committed themselves and they said Nasa we will do at the time of the giving of the Torah. Shahu Bikinas Bitl Haratzon which is this complete surrender, to give themselves completely over, completely an insane commitment. Right? It's insane coming from their essence of their soul without any, any sophistication. Right? It was just simple. Nevertheless, in Yiddish, my grandmother used to say, Translate that into English. Promising and loving doesn't cost any money. You know, you can make promises, but it's a kasnisht. They made a promise then. A promise is nice. Now let's see it in action. Um, this was a, they said it. And they, they meant it, but they still said it only. The Kabbalah believed, they accepted it. The Afsha Kablu believe Be'emes, and even though it wasn't, God forbid, false, it was really true. Be'emes Lamitai, with, with complete truth. Bechol Nekudas Lavavam, with the entire depth of their heart. Shenekudas, Shenikra Nekudas Arotzen, the deepest point of their will and desire. They accepted the Torah Shabalev. Shalamailam and Asaykh Lavatam, that is higher than reason and understanding. It did not come to actualization. To literally stick their neck out for God in the literal sense. Even though in their intentions, they were saying to God, if you ask us to die for you, we'll die for you. But that was, and they meant it, but there was only an acceptance to do it. It wasn't that they did it. And God actually even testifies that it was true. And God testified to the truth of their commitment. What did Hashem say after the giving of the Torah? If only they will, I, they can keep this level of their heart in the future. Their hearts won't go astray. If only I have them now so committed to me, I wish they will not be they will not, their hearts will not wander. Now really, Hashem answered this to Moshe when Moshe said, when Moshe was upset that the Jewish people said God should stop speaking to them. Moshe said, to, the Jews came to Moshe and they said, we don't want to hear from God anymore. We can't handle it. You speak and you be the go-between. And Moshe was upset about that. And God said to Moshe, if only their hearts will be like this forever. So it would seem like God was happy with the distance. It seems like there was a retraction on their end. They didn't want to die. They said, if they, it, more than that, they said, we don't want to die. If we're going to listen. No, it's not because they weren't willing to die. It's because they knew that it's not God's intention they should die. 
They knew God wants them to live like Jews, not die like Jews. Gamsham is giving them the Torah now. So it wasn't because they were afraid of death or they didn't want to make the commitment all the way. They were. But they knew that that was against Hashem's will. That's why Hashem said, I love their heart. It's good they're, what, they, what they're saying. But it's still still only a commitment. It wasn't done. They didn't want to trip out at that moment to be absorbed. And if, if they would hear from God, their souls would expire completely. They would not be able to keep themselves attached to the body. That's not what it. They wanted to return to their bodies. For that, they needed Moshe to be the go-between. Or else they knew that they, they would not be able to resist the, the temptation to dissolve into the infinite light. And so they, that's why they said, we got to put the brakes on this. We can't anymore. We know our capacity. We know we're going to dissolve. And it was, and and, 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 you know, when you're experiencing that, there's no, there's no, why, why would you not want to dissolve? It wasn't like because they still wanted to eat cupcakes with sprinkles. They didn't want to resolve because they knew that it's that Hashem wants a home in this world. So Vishamanu Vasinu, Kamashakanu, they said, Vishamanu, we will do, Vasinu, we will do. And that's why God was so happy about it. That's why Hashem said this is great. This is indicating even deeper on how deeply committed they were. They were not only willing to sacrifice their physical existence for God, they were even willing to sacrifice their spiritual ecstasy and bliss as well to fulfill God's will. The only thing was mattered was what do you want, God, not what we're experiencing. So it was the purest moment of acceptance. It was so powerful. The Nas of Adai however... And similar to how Rabbi Akiva said to his students, Kol Yomai, and the, the Jewish people were then on the level of Rabbi Akiva. What did Rabbi Akiva say when he was they, when they were when the Romans were torturing him, the most horrific torture? They were skinning him alive. And 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 Rabbi, and Rabbi Akiva was in bliss. And they asked him, like, how, how can you be like this? And he said, all my life I've been waiting for the moment, for the opportunity to be able to, to give my life up for God. You see, mitstar, I was in pain because I, I, I felt like I can't give him everything. When will it come the time that I will be able to fulfill it? That I'll be able to do it. So what he's saying over here is like this. The question is, why is Rabbi Akiva wanting to die for God? Why wasn't it enough the fact that he's willing to die? In other words, if all his life he's saying Shema and he's and he's ready, he's ready if if he needs to, he's well, he's ready to give everything up for God for God's sake, then sh then he made the commitment. So why is he so excited now when he finally was able to do it? Well, he did it every day. The answer is that's the commitment, and now it's actually being done. And Rabbi Akiva understood. That when it's being done in the in the real, in reality, it surpasses the commitment that it should be done. Um, There's no question that Rabbi Akiva's Mesiris Nefesh in his daily Shema was, was fully sincere. With all of his desire of his, of his will of his heart. It says in and the reason for that is because at the moment Rabbi Akiva gave his life in the literal sense, it was, it affected and it touched God much more than all the commitments to do it. And that's why it says in Eitz Chaim, we, we spoke about this in another time, something really intense. Eitz Chaim is the book of the Ari. The Ari explains why did such a horrific thing have to happen. That ten, the ten martyrs, the greatest rabbis, were tortured to death in the most horrific manner. What was the reason for it? And it says in the Chaim that because the exile was just about to start, and during the exile we don't have we don't have karbonot, we don't have many temple service, which means we're lacking in our means to be able to elicit what's called Allah Sma'ya Nukfin for us to be able to lift feminine waters to draw down the masculine waters for God. So we needed to send up something so intense 
that will keep the faucet flowing for 2,000 years. It, what, we needed a carbon. We needed something that will register and elicit so deep that won't expire until Mashiach comes. And that's why, still, we still don't understand it, but that's the reason why nothing less than something so intense. If not for this, then the entire communication from up and down would have been. That's why Hashem said to the angels, if you make another sound, I'm destroying the world. To, I'm going to... Because the world can't exist without a, 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 a stimulator. Their Messiris Nefesh, they're willing to come to die for God's sake and with such devotion and such commitment, is still felt by God today and he's still showering us with blessings as a result of that. And that compensates for all the Sarusa de Latata that was lacking and that, can, and that lacks during the time of exile. They elevated man, man means Maya Nukfin, feminine waters, that represents what we send to God. And that was because they did Mesiris Nefesh, not in their minds, they did it in the literal sense. And that happened in the days of Mordechai and Esther. In other words, in the days of Mordechai, it wasn't a commitment to die. They, 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 they weren't killed, but they, they were ready to be put to death for how long? For an entire year. Haman didn't want to kill the Jews. Haman only wanted them. Let me just one minute. I want to open the door for them. Yet, but you can come, come in. Almost, he finished the tenant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that 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 Haman didn't want Haman Haman had had didn't like that Mordechai. What he couldn't stand was the Jews, the Jews, the Jews' religion. Because what would bother him? Mordechai doesn't bow down to, to idols, doesn't bow down to him. So if the Jews would drop their religion, their faith, he wasn't out to destroy the Jewish race. He was he was he wanted to destroy the Jews because they're Jews. And if the Jews would have relinquished their Judaism, they would be accepted by, by Haman and, and, and they wouldn't do them anything. And the Jews were facing this decree for an entire year, and they were all not one of them. Um, renegated. Not one of them um, left the Jewish people and joined the ranks. So this was a a a national Messiris Nefesh from the entire Jewish people willing to die for God. Such something like this never happened. And it wasn't like just for a quick moment, it was for an entire year, because the decree was standing looming over them for an entire year. And they had enough millions of people. So what they said to God by Har Sinai, Nasev and Ishma, we will do no matter what. We're yours no matter what. Now is when they actually fulfilled their commitment. And for that reason, this is the completion of the giving of the Torah. And that's why now is when we really got the horse. What do you mean? The action was that they stayed Jewish for an entire year. No one stepped out of Judaism. If it, and it meant that they were all accepting to be killed. They weren't sure what was going to happen on the 13th of Adar, that the Jews will be able to overpower their enemies. The king had made a decree that all Jews could be killed and slaughtered on that day. They, they, for an entire year, they were in the, they were in the unknown. Yehudi is a special name you see, if 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 the, if the if the decree would have been against the race, it would have been against the Hebrews, the Ivrim. It wasn't against the, the Hebrews; it was against the Yehudim. The sages say, "Why is Jew called Jew? Jews are called Jews because they deny, they reject Avodah Zarah, they reject idolatry." Yehudim. That he wants to destroy and annihilate all the Yehudim, 
Mordechai was the leader of this faith. He was the one who didn't bow. That's why he's called Yehudi. And even though Mordechai is from the tribe of Benjamin, so he should be called Ish Yamini. Like he's actually called Ish Yamini. Why is he also called Ish Yehudi? Because he, the Jewishness of the Jew was pronounced in Mordechai, and he evoked that in every Jew. And even the Kohanim and the Levim that were then alive, everybody was called Yehudim. Yehudim really means the tribe of Yehuda. Al-Shem, why? Because Yehud is the power to lay yourself down for God. Al-Shem chinus mesiris nefesh al kiddush Hashem. It was for the mesiris nefesh, for the sanctification of God's name. Shaloi hamiru dasam. They did not forsake their faith and their and their and their belief system. Lahach yois nafsham in exchange for being granted a license to continue living. The Alkain Dafka Machmas Mesiris Nefesh Zu. It was only because of this Mesiris Nefesh. Shabali de Payal Mamish. It came to into the actual. Who Shazachoi Oise Hador. That generation merited. Leois Benafsha Mamish. That in their souls they would experience. Bichinas Gilui. A revelation. Call up Chinas Hamadregis Ayoiser El Yonis. All the highest levels. That we spoke about earlier, the garment and the and the crown and the horse. Everything was brought down into their experience. <laughs> Which comes down from the essence of the Orin Sof. Dafka. <laughs> the garment of the king, the Kesar Malchus and the crown of the king, the Sus and the horse canal, the Ainu Vikibala Yehudim. And that's the meaning the the the, the Yehudim received. As is that which they began to do at the time of the giving of the Torah, and now was the, the ceiling of it, now was the conclusion of it, now is when they finally were able to like fully, fully complete it. The Daila Maven, and it is enough to those who understand. In the next piece that we're not going to learn this week, he continues to explain. Why is, how does Haman become a player in all of this? And this, this is explained in chapter 20, 21, and 22, and 23. And as I told you, that's the part that I want to finish till 24. And then we'll see what we're doing with the rest of the Mimer, which I didn't learn yet. Maybe I'm going to learn it on the 15 hours on my flight. Ooh, that's a good thing to do. Okay. So what does that mean?